time on Cowboy Bebop because we got to really define these characters, which mm. you don't always get to do in anime. Mm. You get to, we got to really define them and, and, and tear them <laughs> apart, and we were given kind of an unlimited time to do wow. it, where usually things are chop, chop, chop. Get it done quickly. Sure. So, um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but it, it's so. a, it's a different process between doing original animation and and doing anime. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how is the audition process different for an original versus an anime series? Right. Um, well, um, you know, in the same sense, some anime, at least in Los Angeles, mm. um, I've had the good fortune of being contacted by a producer or a director, and that was how it was with Cowboy Bebop. Mm. Um, they called me and said, we would like you to play this character. Wow. <laughs> and they knew my work before, and little did I know it was going to blow up and be mm. so huge, but that is a, an awesome <laughs> testament to um, Mary Elizabeth, who directed mm. us, and to uh, uh, the, the producers mm. to say, oh, we just want her to play this part. Um, but, okay, so um, audition process is, is very similar um, where you would either go into a studio and audition. They'll say, you're going to audition for this character. And you go in, you get, you get it, you read it, you go in. Um, now, in you know, the last however many years, we do all of our auditions uh, remotely oh, at home. So mm -hmm. we have a, a studio set up in our house. And my husband's a musician, so mm -hmm. it works for both of us. Nice. And um, we do almost all of our... I would say 99.9% .9 of my auditions are at the home studio, and wow. then I send them into my agent or um, producers who want them directly, people I've worked for for years. Um, they might say, oh, could you send it directly over to us, and you know, I'll send it to them. But usually always MP3 wow. directly to whoever needs it. And is that like live with the producer online, or do they say, here's what you, you do, you just send it in? No, they, say, they wow. send the sides, the, the, the parts of the character. Uh, they'll mm. give you a nice breakdown usually, which you're lucky if you do. <laughs> I mean, rarely we'll get something where it's like, eh, one line, you know, description, uh, she's a girl and uh, she's girly, you know, there's something, you know, yeah. like take it away. Mm. Um, no, usually we get like a nice breakdown, we might mm. get a picture, uh, mm. you know, of, of what they're looking for, or, and if it's anime, then it's already been done. Mm. So they can, you know, sometimes when you're doing anime, they want you to sound a lot like who's done it already mm, sure. in Japan, and, and that's a challenge. Yeah. Sometimes, and more and more, I have to say, they let you take it. Mm. Like, oh, why don't you try this, try this, and um, usually in the audition process, they'll, they'll get enough from your audition, but sometimes they'll say, oh, would you send us this line again, or would you, send, uh, would you do it over again, and mm -hmm. that's always a good sign, too. And sometimes you get, um, you have to go in for an audition, and then sometimes you have to go back and mm. do a callback or even a second callback. So it just depends on who and what you're gotcha. auditioning for. D do you prefer doing it with somebody there that you can sort of talk to? I do, actually. Okay. Yeah. I do. I like that a lot. I mean, I, I, I trust myself. You have to trust yourself as an actor mm -hmm. that you're going to send in the best take. And sometimes with my agents, I send in two takes, and they always say, we just want one take, Melissa. <laughs> but I'll say, but I varied it. I varied this and made her a little higher, and this one was a little lower. And I like bouncing off of someone else. I do. But, I, but, I, but you know, as doing it on your own, and that's what most voice actors have to do. You have to trust yourself, and you become a better actor yeah. that way, and you listen differently. And mm -hmm. you just have to trust yourself and not do 20 takes <laughs> and obsess over each one as you listen and, you know, do a couple of takes and know that you did it and then narrow it down. But yeah, it's 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 challenging. But I do. I like I like to be with people. I like to, and maybe that's sure. the theater part of me. Yeah. I like to. <laughs> I perform on stage a lot, mm -hmm. so I like the the feedback right away. Sure. So it's like com universally opposite to mm -hmm. what you do as a voiceover artist. Yeah. You are either on stage in front of three thousand people, or you're in a booth by yourself, <laughs> or at home recording completely by yourself. Yeah. But you know, when you go into a studio, you you enjoy being in front of even just the engineer mm. yeah, sure. <laughs> just to get a little chuckle or something right. you know? some audience exactly <laughs> do, do you find it harder um, working in a booth or going out on stage in front of a bunch of different people you know I think they they're both I love mm. them both okay. I yeah. really do I, I 
it's funny because I'm I'm uh, a very private person for someone who does stage. Mm. You know, I'm I'm not outwardly gregarious, and mm. you know, I, I I but I love going out on stage. It's very personal for me, and and. And then to have that response, whether it's 50 people in an audience or 3,000 people <laughs> in an audience, it's really an incredible feeling. Sure. When you're in the booth, it's also, you know, you can get into yourself as an actor, but you can use every aspect. You can mm. flail your arms and <laughs> you can do whatever physicality you want, which I think comes with a character. You mm -hmm. don't want to stand still, sure. you know, so on, if you're doing TV or film, you have to be very mindful mm. of the camera and, and not flail about or do anything. And that's a whole different <laughs> element. So as an actor, you know, you're challenged in so many ways yeah. just by little technical things. Mm. But I can't say that I prefer stage or, or studio work mm. because I, I really love them both and they bring so much to me on, yeah. on both ends. Well, you've been doing stage for so long since you were a kid. Yes. So that, that's that's got to help too, I imagine. It does. Yeah. It, it really does. I've always loved it. I, I was a very shy little girl. I have three <laughs> older brothers wow. who are very outgoing, telling mm. jokes, and, and I was just the the little, the youngest, and just watching them all. And can I say something? No, I can't say a thing. And and um, and, and I started doing, um, I started in dance classes w when I was three, and wow. I continued that all throughout my career. And um, um, my mom said, you know, when you got out on stage, something changed in you. Uh. And and uh, she continued having me do, you know, the recitals and everything. And then that turned into like community theater when I was little and. And then it just kind of kept blossoming and blossoming, and, and that was that was my path. I also mm. I played music. I played flute for ten years, and all throughout my childhood and through high school, and mm. and did choir and did theater, and and then started working professionally when I was a teenager. Mm. And um, you know, it, it 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 was something that was mine. It yeah. was all mine. And um, my brothers were always kind of, I think proud when I finally <laughs> spoke up and it was on stage because two of my others are two of my brothers are actors ah, gotcha. and um, and they're married to actresses and then my my oldest brother went the music route and a musician wow. and he is married to musicians so. <laughs> and I'm married All to a musician and yeah. my dad is a drummer too wow. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. so do, you, do you think like if you hadn't done that of you know, the dance and, the, and mm. all that stuff as a kid mm. do you think you would have chosen acting if you hadn't known it was there? I mean, w w was there some sort of path? Ah, that, you know, I just always felt like this pull towards mm. it. I always wanted to, but it was really in our family. Like, we all did it. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, if we didn't have a, a, a house full of crazies, you know, <laughs> telling jokes and doing theater and playing music, and, mm. you know, I don't know. I mean, I think... Uh, I would like to say I would still have been pulled towards mm. it because I, I just loved it so yeah. much. If we had a, a house full of lawyers, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But my, my husband, interesting, he's a, he's a musician, he's a drummer, and, and he's a songwriter and a producer, and his whole family is academia. Interesting. Academia and doctors and lawyers mm. and that, and he's a musician. So he oh, went the other yeah. route, so, so maybe know. that, yeah. You never know what pulls you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, you're known, um, at least as far as I'm concerned, for, for a lot of strong female characters. Mm. And not just in the sort of butt-kicking sense, either. <laughs> uh, like, one of my favorite roles you've done was Rika in Did You Want Tamers? Yes, yes. Um, but like Haruka no Yin. Yes, of course, Haruka, yeah. yes. Um, do you find it harder to play those characters who have that sort of inner strength? Mm. Um, or is it easier for you? You know, uh, it's interesting because those characters that you mentioned, I find they're strong, but they but they have inner heartbreak yeah. and they have inner turmoil. And you know, one thing I really like to do as an actor is find the layers. And I know we're just doing anime, but you're really <laughs> not. And mm -hmm. and if you bring some real honesty to it, and maybe find you know, like why did she have that little sad thing there yeah. that they did in Japanese? And you know, it would be it would be easy, I think, to take it one note and and say oh she's just a butt kicking you know firecracker little girl but there I always try to find a little something to make them human mm. and maybe it's not a heartbreak or maybe it's they're just angry or maybe <laughs> that they are just tough but mm. but I don't know there there's always uh, layers that mm. that you can find but I do I love strong characters because I used to always just play you know sweet little <laughs> ditzy characters my very first 
voiceover mm. job ever was the voice of Betty Boop. Oh, and yeah. And I did that for a long time. The archetypical, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's the archetypical, you know, mm. boop, 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 and, mm. and, and ditzy and girly. And, and then I did Hello Kitty for a long time yeah. as well. So, but I made Hello Kitty a little more spunky <laughs> and made her, you know, she always got in trouble on this little mm. series. It was called um, Hello Kitty's Paradise. Mm. And, um, and I, I made her a little more spunky. And, and I'm, I'm, as long as the director and the producers are happy, and, and then I'm happy. And, and if they let me kind of expand a little bit, they can always bring me back down if, sure. if they don't like anything. And, and so I'm, I'm always very gratified when I get to kind of explore <laughs> a little within yeah. characters. Have there been any characters you've had a difficult time finding that sort of depth in? Mm. Sometimes, um, sometimes there are, uh, you know, there, there was a character I did, uh, mm. Ray, on um, Eureka 7. Okay, yeah. Um, and she was going through some real heartache and, mm -hmm. and turmoil and, and, and uh, something with the character. I can't remember mm -hmm. it all about, about um, you know, being uh, with her husband mm -hmm. and a child and a, and a mm -hmm. whole thing. It was very heartbreaking and sad. And I remember thinking, this is so heartbreaking. But I had gone through some heartbreaking things in my life. So I thought, oh, you know, let me just kind of reel this in together. But sometimes it's, it's, it's challenging to get to those, to those really dark places. It's not just all anime squeaky, you know. <laughs> there are some characters that I've, I've had a chance to play some really mean, like mm. like almost witchy, Ooh. like like I played this one character and I cannot remember <laughs> the show. Mm. I, I can't remember it, but she would like eat organs or, you know, oh, just like wow. a horribly <laughs> gross, like mean witchy, but you know, I had not really had a chance to do a lot of characters like that, yeah. and I and I thought, well, this is this is great that I get to do this. But how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> how do you do that? How do you how yeah. do you do it? You just you just kind of get there. You you. For me, technically, um, I look at the character, I listen to what they've done. But for me, it it, it all starts in where am I going to place the voice? Mm. Is it going to be in here? Is it going to be up here? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be somewhere uh. in between? And 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 then kind of uh, find even their physical mannerisms. Mm. And and you know, it, it's when I got Gaz from Invader Zim. Mm. Um, I don't know what it was, but I, I saw this dark little girl and and. She's so kind of like intense and like almost mm. twisted in her head, <laughs> but she knows what she's talking about. And and there was like something about her that I was like labored in her voice. Mm. And I thought, oh, she's like a little girl, Jack Nicholson. And wow. I kind of like, <laughs> so you think of some nutty things mm. to kind of get to a character, sure. but but there somehow you like kind of yeah. say, oh this this, oh heartache mm -hmm. or or jubilation or you know and you know you just kind of find your place. It's really mm -hmm. gratifying. I sure. really really enjoy doing voice work, That's and I've cool. been so blessed <laughs> to have that as a big part of my career. What was that process with Edward Wong, Hapa Pablo the Fourth? Because my gosh, yeah, yeah, the whole, I can't say the whole name even. <laughs> Step up my game. Yeah, it's here. fine. It's fine. Um, I mean, it, it's a character that kind of bounces all over the place, and, and is in some ways a very straightforward character. Yes, yes. But you know, the show never treats Ed that way. Mm -mm, no, and it's just, it's just a part. Of, it's like her, her little quirks are no big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, she's just, a, she's just a part of the crew, and she's a hacker. She's probably, she's smarter than all of them. Mm -hmm. She's got so much going on, but she's effervescent and bouncing off the wall and, and childlike. Yeah. But then she herself had some sadness and, and sure. on her path as well. But, um, you know, Mary Elizabeth, our director, um, said, you know what, I want, I want you to watch a little of it. And then we'll, and, you know, and then we'll explore her. Mm. And that, like I said, we had kind of this unlimited time. We were wow. never under this great time crunch that a lot of studios are. So, but the first thing she said was, before we even start recording, we're going to take you into this other studio, and I want you to watch the opening credits wow. and hear the music. <laughs> and it was so awesome. Mm. And, and so I got a feel for the show right there. So I knew this was not your typical thing. There's kind of a coolness about this mm. show, even though she is. Uh, you know, a little 
bubbly, kooky <laughs> character, but there's a lot more going on. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, let's just find her. Don't be in a rush. We're going to find her. And even from line to line, we would take the time to explore her even more. And I, I got to improv a little bit nice. here and there. And, and I think it was needed because mm -hmm. the, the actress who did it originally in Japan was wonderful and brilliant and did her own kooky things, but we did not want to copy that. Right. We had to make it my own. And um, maybe that's why they hired me to do it because they <laughs> knew I, I could cross that kooky line very well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got to really explore her and, and I had so much fun doing her. I really did. I had so much fun. I wish we could have done more and more. Yeah, then when kidding. we did the movie, we did the movie and that was a blast. Um, and then uh, we did a game, but the game never uh, yeah, went anywhere, yeah, which is so sad. So now, so many years later with... Um, uh, with the Blu-ray coming out That's and, true, and yeah. everything, mm -hmm. and we did... Um, we did uh, interviews for cool. the Blu-ray, and then we did this whole round table where we all ate dinner in Mary Elizabeth's backyard. We ordered <laughs> Thai food, and, nice. and, and we all got to kind of talk with each other and, and reminisce about it, and it was, it was great. That is amazing. Yeah, it was great. So that's what, when we get to do these conventions together, we have so much fun. Wow. Like, we went to the zoo this morning with Bo and his wife, and, cool. and that was awesome <laughs> you know to go we went my little boy was holding jet's hand wow. i thought that's pretty <laughs> that, cool, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did you think just to get back to, to bebop a little bit um i think one of the things for me watching bebop was seeing that ending coming up uh, and seeing how they wrapped up ed's yeah role in that yeah, yeah. that was brilliantly done what was your perspective on just kind of how they did that on on where they went with Ed? I mean, I thought, I thought it was you know, it, you know, it, it was sad to see her leave the crew and all that, but it was almost apropos. Exactly. I thought everyone's ending was kind of apropos Absolutely. for for each character, yeah. and of course it went that way, sure. and and it, you kind of you kind of. She kind of had to, you yeah. know. She had to. She had to move on and find her path, just like they all. They exactly. All do. Well, I, I was talking to a friend who was saying that, you know, he realized I don't want to see Ed going through the ending with anything. Everything is going to. I can see is coming. Yes. I don't want her there. Yeah. So it's really so it's, neat. Yeah, she yeah. kind of needed to go another way, which mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was. I thought it was great. Yeah. It was a brilliant series. I never, you know, I've never watched it in Japanese besides oh, when yeah. we. Besides when we dubbed it, mm -hmm. and I got to watch it sure. in Japanese, yeah. but it, it makes me kind of feel like now I'd like to kind of sit and watch it. <laughs> just, just I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be one of the, one of the tough things about um, doing anime is again you don't get the script ahead of time. Mm -mm. So, mm -hmm. do you ever get like the, the the director coming to you and saying, you know, here's what's going to happen in three episodes? Um, no, well, Mary surprised us completely. Okay. Yeah, wow. she did not tell us. Mm. She what because she wanted our emotions to be raw and real right then, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think I have had directors over the years say, "Oh, you know, this is going to be coming up, and your character is going to come to an end." And she kind of surprised us all as they came, and I loved that. <laughs> I did. It was great. And you would, you know, that's why like on some. TV shows, you know, they don't give them the script. They want to know, and yeah. you want to keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, all the emotions, nice and real and, and fresh. Yeah, I thought it was a great ending for, for. Of course, I hated to see her go, but I hated to see sure. the whole show end. Yeah. you know, we wanted to all keep going. <laughs> but we have this little gem. It's a little thing, gem, so. exactly. It's it's yeah. perfect. And now, and and for and to hear response from fans mm. so many years later is is kind of mind blowing. Yeah. you know, to yeah. still have that going on. And then when we all get together at the conventions, we mm. just. We have such a great time reminiscing, and we, you know, we never record it together. Oh yeah, we of record course. singly oh. in the studio, so we only get sure. to hear voices, <laughs> you know. And sometimes, if they had not recorded yet, mm, I, yeah. it, it was just by myself. So interesting. You know, yeah. yeah, that yeah, that would be that would be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other roles, sort of in general, in anime or, or otherwise, that you would like to do that you see mm. and think, ooh, that would be an interesting sort of something I've never done before? Hmm. Something I've never done before. Mm. Um, no, I mean I'm, I'm so lucky to 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 be doing as much as I do. I'm, I'm mm. knock on <laughs> knock on wood. Something. Um, you know, um, as as I've grown up in this business, um, I find that I'm able to do more. I mean, maybe yeah. people look at me differently, or maybe my voice is stretching and growing in mm. other directions. I'm getting to play more 
women uh, instead yeah. of just kids. And I love that. And I'm getting to play darker characters nice. and, and you know evil characters, which is so much fun. And yeah. I love playing the femme fatales nice. that are smirky and, and <laughs> sultry and fun. And, and I mean, that's what's fun about this business is that you get to do a lot. Do you find the voice acting industry um, it's a little easier to grow older. I know one of the problems you know, actors get a, a lot is just there are fewer and fewer roles for you know As you, people yes. older than twenty years old. It's like, my oh gosh. yeah, and the, and you're you're constantly like saying, okay, what am I now? Yeah. Hmm. I'm a, you know, I feel like I've been a tweeny as uh, you're a tweeny when you're like a teenager going into like your 20s and you're kind of like 21 and you're still playing 12 years old yeah. or whatever. But then as you grow older, even more, you become a tweeny in some ways because it's like, as far as voiceover, your voice sounds young enough to do A, B, and C, mm -hmm. but you're older and you bring a little more because you mm. have a little more life. That, sure. that you've lived so you could bring a little more you could play a mother character and mm -hmm. you know which I never did before I had a child and my little boy is five now and I don't know why but it's just <laughs> maybe there's something motherly about me now uh, <laughs> and it comes out in my voice and I and yeah. I think it's the same for on camera or even on stage mm -hmm. you know I sometimes you don't look your age mm -hmm. and you and there's the whole ageism you yeah. know like you don't yeah. want people mm -hmm you know, not hiring you because of a number and mm. but you still look a certain age but then you don't want to force it and go, you know, go mm. up against a 20 year old for something right. that you're not <laughs> really right for. So yeah. I, it, there's a reality that sets in as mm. an actor, be it on camera, be it voiceover, be it stage. Mm -hmm. I, there's a reality that sets in and then as soon as you get to that reality, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Because you don't want to pretend that you're something that you're not and, and, and Realistically, you know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to do anything that you should be doing. You want to show yourself in the best light. So exactly. if you're using your voice in some way and people are really liking it, then go with it. Yeah. You know, so I think a lot of people fight that, mm -hmm. and in this business especially, they fight yeah. it. They fight, you know, oh, I've got to look this way and I've got to look this way. And I think if you're just looking you and your best and yeah. taking care of your voice and, mm. you know, I, I think the work will be there. Yeah. You hope. Yeah. <laughs> you do your best. So yeah. what are you working on these days? Are you working on Neptunia? Neptunia, I um, just wrapped up that, like another another round of a game. Um, and uh, we also did a series for that, cool. that we did through Funimation, that we ah. actually filmed, even though I'm in Los Angeles, we filmed in, in Dallas where ah. Funimation is, so that was a blast. Cool. And I got to go there and see their studios. Um, and other than that, just, you know, working, um, uh, oh, what did I do? Glitter Squad. Oh, There's cool. a, a Glitter Squad. We're allowed to start talking about that now. Okay, so nice. I should say that. Yeah, I just got an email do. from <laughs> producers saying you could talk about it. So cool. Glitter Squad. Um, um, yeah, just, yeah, just, just working and, and right. just. Yeah, and, and raising my little boy, and oh, he's in kindergarten. Cool. My husband and I are like, <laughs> well, you know, there's a full time job that. right there. That's so. a full time job too, but it's it's good to you know I like mm -hmm. to I like to keep working. Yeah. So yeah, it's Very good. it's important, and and it's also fun to bring him here to see oh, what mommy does, so. <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. Oh no kidding! Yeah, <laughs> it's a great place to start. Well, thank you very much You're for doing welcome. this. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You bet. Enjoy the con. Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>